everyone, and welcome back to my monthly crafting and talking show, Craft Versations, where this month my guest is the delightfully devilish, except actually very nice and cool guy, Ryan Garcia! Oh, hello, I'm Ryan. Uh, wait, what? I thought that the series ended with William Joe Stripling. Oh, this series. Yeah. <laughs> nope, surprise. <laughs> I thought it was the series ender. He, made he it, wanted it to be the series He made it wildly finale. clear. But at the end of yeah. it, you, I think he got you agreeing with him. No. Okay. No. Cool. I'll I go. just was trying to make him feel better. Fans tweet me at home if you have proof <laughs> that she agreed with William Joe Stribling. I didn't. I never said it would be the finale. Okay. Of course not. But you do have a lot to live up to because it was a good episode. It was funny. You probably remember Ryan from his excellent portrayal of Great Guy Eddie in Co Party. Great Guy Eddie Dantes. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for being here. I'm happy to be here. How are you doing? Things have been really good. Good. Yeah. I spent some time with William Joe Stribling. Did you? Shooting some stellar people. Recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're going to get into that. I thought you were like, I just had breakfast with him this morning. Oh, no. <laughs> but I did have lunch by myself in my car just before coming in here. Watching his episode. Watching his episode. So you did spend time with him. I did spend time with him <laughs> and I've been devising how I can beat his points. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see if you do. <laughs> Today we are going to be decorating, well, slash making coasters. So if you want to join us, here's what you'll need. Ceramic tiles. You can get these at a hardware store. You will need some rubbing alcohol that you can get at your local store. You will need some eye droplet thingies, dropper thingies. <laughs> I didn't mean to get this many, but they only came in bags of 25, so. We're gonna use every single one of them. <laughs> well, you'll need some little felt pads, and you'll need various colors of Sharpies. Available for $10 at Costco. I love coasters so yeah, much. coasters are great. My wife, yeah. Kelly Walker, uh -huh. who just did a reading for the film that she wrote. Oh, and yeah? so we had some people over, and my most exciting part while setting up was setting a different coaster for each person. Whoa. Uh, did you pick them out per the person? Was it like a personal? It was more like I was really excited because there were eight people plus me. Uh huh. So I had four of two different types of coasters. Oh, That's gotcha. Really exciting. That is pretty thrilling. And so I switched. From one kind of coaster to the other. I like other. that. Created a pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. That's nice. Um, things are really excellent. <laughs> Good. <laughs> right now. Uh, had a really fun February. Yeah. Tell us about it. Shooting. I've already said it once, but Stella, Stella people. people. And then um, my wife and I co-directed oh, yeah? a short film together that a friend wrote. It wasn't my first time directing, but it was hers, so it was interesting. I didn't know you directed. Oh, yeah. A couple things That's just here so and there. That's cool. Do you um, like coming it? for you, Joe. <laughs> In more ways than one. Mm -hmm. Do you like directing? I do. I really love it. I also teach and coach, mm -hmm. so it's kind of That's an true. aspect. It's a similar thing. Of that, it's just storytelling. I always thought when it comes to theater, I felt pretty equipped to direct, mm -hmm. only because I have more experience there mm -hmm. with uh, ading and what happens with sound design and actually building sets. But with film, I wanted to make sure I had enough. Mm -hmm. experience actually being on set, knowing what everyone's job is, being able to have a vocabulary to communicate with all of them what the central vision is. Totally. And now I feel more comfortable in that arena, so I've been dabbling in it. But it was interesting to have two people under the directing hat, mm. because it's like, oh, well, director's kind of final say, but what do you do when there's when there's two of you. Doughboys. Did you guys butt heads at all? Not at all. That's great. One reason is that she is a video editor and so she has some like sick skills and knowing how to cut things together and just technically what we need. And I am practiced in a lot of talking to actors. So she would say things, she would start talking and saying things like, no, but when we go into this next shot, you're going to have to be, and then I'd say, Right, so what you want, and what you feel. <laughs> right. Blah, 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 blah. You knew mm, how to bougie stuff. Yeah. speak actor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We passed off to each other really nicely. That's wonderful. What's the name of that film? It's called The Brown List. Okay, cool. It's all about one girl who is too ethnic to play the white parts, but not ethnic enough to play the ethnic characters. I know people that can relate to that exact problem. Uh, I'm one of them. Yeah! Uh, might Sean be one, one yes, of them? Yeah, he yeah, is. Yeah, Shade yeah. as well. And so all the stories in it are real stories from her real life. Wow. Uh, her name's Ursula Taharian. What is her ethnicity? She's half Afghani. Oh, interesting. And she is a comedic genius. The thing she wrote is all 
based on real events that she's gone through and then we punched it up a little bit into ours so it's her trying to get on the brown list it's pretty fun That's i'm excited great. for that one to come out we're That's gonna be so cool. submitting that to festivals Did, soon it's pretty close who wrote it she, she wrote it she wrote it she wrote it cool yeah that's definitely something that uh multiple people we know can yeah get it's on board with. Not tough me. because no. all of hollywood is not, not you not me no <laughs> i'm 100 just plain old white but don't say plain. We're old. We are young and vibrant. I am 100% young, vibrant, white. There we go. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Thank uh, you. We just got to change the verbiage. Don't put yourself down right in the middle of your own show. We get yeah. frustrated because people, not that you can always do better and always have more people of color in your things, but people will be like, there's no POC in pop party. And we're like, well... There is. Yeah. You just don't think they are because they don't look it as much as Mi others. nombre es Ryan Garcia. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your heritage is Cuban? I'm three quarters Cuban. Yeah, okay. And I'm also an eighth Irish and an eighth Native American. Whoa, that's very cool. Yeah. Back to what you were saying earlier, where do you teach? I teach and coach actors mm -hmm. at a studio called John Rosenfeld Studios. Mm -hmm. It's where I met Sean. Mm -hmm. Also Tom Vitrinis, mm -hmm. who's a large part of the show. And also, no, I didn't meet Tara Perry there. I met no? Tara Perry through Tom Vitrinis through 30 Minute Musicals. Oh, crazy. Okay. Um, but yeah, I teach over there. Very cool. How long have you been there? I've been at that... I don't know what I'm doing here. I haven't done any planning. It's wonderful. Just, I really like it. I, for some reason, just gravitated toward Denver Bronco colors. <laughs> and now I've I, got a very specifically <laughs> themed I'm going to be in a wedding here. later this year. Wait, and I thought you were going to say later this evening. Later this evening. No, later this year. <laughs> and they're having Denver Bronco colors. Oh. So I've been with John at his studio. I kind of came to LA seven years ago and I started taking class there right away. And now, like, I, I, I really love acting class. It feels more now like just going to the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, there's mm -hmm. this saying about piano player that if he doesn't practice for one mm -hmm. day, then he can feel a difference in his playing. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't practice for two days, then his neighbors can tell a difference. If he doesn't mm -hmm. practice for three days in a row, then the audience can tell a difference. Mm -hmm. So it's really just like if it's something that you really care about and are passionate about, that mm -hmm. you're staying in practice in it all the time so that totally. the moment an audition comes up or being on set comes up, it doesn't, it's not a, a, an event in your day. It's just part of the routine totally. that you're going through. Totally. That's um, awesome. And then about three years ago, I started teaching there. Well, we knew right away. Oh. I guess I shouldn't for everybody, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's You're talking true. about the audition for... That we, well, even before, although we did make you read for it, we mm -hmm. had you in mind for the role of Eddie Dante's A Great Guy. I... Right off the bat. took that, and I told you guys this, I think. But I took that audition really seriously. You did, and you were great. And I like got fully dressed up in a you suit mm -hmm. with a vest mm -hmm. and a tie. And when I showed up, I saw Clayton Snyder mm -hmm. exiting, and I thought, well, great, he's getting the role. Because <laughs> I thought we were auditioning for the uh, same uh, thing. Uh, and then he was like, oh, audition for the Russian one. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. And then I got in, but I felt so self-conscious because the moment that I started, I, went, I got in there, and these are things that I'm working on, my own demon. Sean was like, you didn't get dressed up like that for this, did you? <laughs> uh, and I think I said something like, oh, no, 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 I had something else going on, so I put this on. Because I just didn't want to seem like a nerd that cared that much. So I took care of myself. No, it was great. We loved that you looked so nice. You really did. And you, <laughs> you also so, had that, negative like... one point for Sean. <laughs> Ah, dang. We, <laughs> you had that like whole monologue memorized already and we were like, I mean, you can feel silly about it. Even though we already like knew we really wanted you for it, like it, all of that only helped. We were like, wow, Ryan's like really dedicated. Nice. He memorized all of that stuff yeah. that we gave him, which you totally didn't have to do. So I was going to have to some point because uh, I yeah, knew I was going to get it. I'm super impressed with how well you did. You really didn't falter much on all of that wordy stuff that we I wore, I walked around. Like, I annoyed my wife a lot with it. Walked I around the house. Walking just around not, set doing walk, I, I, yeah, I didn't do a lot of fraternizing with people. I just walked on the set and said those <laughs> lines over and over and over and over and over. Yeah. Did you have fun being... Oh, my gosh. I had so much fun. An evil guy. And I also was like... I was on set a lot of days. In comparison yeah, to were. how much I was actually... I was super nervous that people... Well, because we had to have you be like a dead body for a couple days. Yeah. A dead body. A dead body. Okay. <laughs> uh, spoiler. Post-spoiler. <laughs> yeah, but if, if you haven't watched Pope Party at this point, I just... But, no, no. Right. 
But yeah, I was worried that people were going to notice how many days you were like on set based on our own Instagram. Right. And stuff. I, think he, I think it got hidden. Yeah, I was kind of trying to keep people from, certain people from like, or like Tara, yeah. I didn't want it to be obvious that certain people weren't on set very much and yeah. other people were, but you were on set quite a bit, even considering that, I guess you're in three episodes. Three well, I'm in a lot of episodes and there's a lot of doubles that play me, there aren't are there? There's like, the, who, Joey plays you. Joey, Joey played my hands at one point. Yeah, Tom plays your hands at one point. Christopher Higgins. Christopher Higgins I think he played my full you. body in a, in a yeah. long shot mm -hmm. outside with you yeah. mm -hmm. on a bridge. Yep. That's Chris Higgins, and I'm sorry that we didn't have you do that, but we just couldn't pay you for a full day to come out for <laughs> one hour to be murder hands. What you could have done is just because you had me there already for six days out of what, like, like twelve? How many days was it total? Ten. Ten. Yeah, you, you were me, there for a lot of days. I was there for six days. You could have just had me stay on set for fourteen well, hours. It's just that I guess that's true. It's that we had weren't lit in those locations, like because one of them is in the kitchen and like we were in the dining room all Ooh. day and one of them is in actually a couple of them are in the kitchen and one of them is out on the bridge which we never were except for that one time but anyway thanks for being game and, um, and then no also, it was really exciting we were also the first shot oh, were yeah, we, we the were? first shot of the yeah. whole thing you sliding was... in like a little crab uh-huh like a little crab <laughs> <laughs> i just the way you do it you just look like a little crab to me and you're so like freshly shaven. You look just look like, <laughs> like cleanest, a newest boy. baby. It's so great. Yeah, that was the very first thing we shot. Yeah. It was funny too. A lot of people were like, "Ooh, well, the killer is this height." So, and we were all like, "Ah, don't." Like based on when Jessica gets strangled, they're like, "Oh, it, it can't be this person." And we were like, "I don't." Oh, all right. Why do audiences? Why do you guys have to be so smart? Like, they're so smart. <laughs> Because like I'm I'm for the first time writing something, mm. and I'm just like I know they're smart because like, I've watched all the Poe party. Figure it out. <laughs> uh, it's audience, hard. You guys are just like I know what it is. It's this. I was I was reading the comments and like they already know. How do they already? A lot of people did. No. Well, I was like, oh, it's fine. Nobody will suspect Eddie, and then a lot of people suspected Eddie. But there were enough other things going on. What? Do you think there should be some white spots left? Sure. Yeah. Is that what you're doing over here? You have like some I white just area. Did a little. I don't know. I'm whatever you want. So as you can see, we're coloring our tiles, which you can do without the added next step, which is that we're going to drop rubbing alcohol on it to sort of make this like weird, not marbled, but kind of marbly design. I'm really so. kind of relying on that marbles marble part to because I that's kind of where the plan is. Where the plan is to not put any planning. Yeah, and I like the marbling that. is going to make it yeah. do something exciting. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Do you often play villains? You're a very good villain. I don't often play villains. That surprises me. I just could not get over how good you were, especially <clears throat> with the like whole time period. You've got a great look for it. Mm, thank you. It's great. I remember in high school, I wanted to play the devil in Damn Yankees, and my friend Keith Habersberger of the Try Guys. Habersberger. Habersberger. Wow. What He's part name. of that uh, BuzzFeed group, the Try Guys now. But now they have oh. like a show on YouTube Red. And he's oh. doing real great. Oh. He was brand new to our high school, and I was like, "All right, well, I'm definitely gonna be, get to play the devil and damn Yankees." And then he just waltzes in and is amazing. Oh. And, got, and but he was amazing. I cast in it. And I got cast as the lead, um, oh, Joe Hardy. It was tough. <laughs> high school was tough, <laughs> and it was tough. <laughs> I was in theater <laughs> and always been attracted to playing bad guys, just because I always feel like they have really great dialogue yeah. and. A lot of times playing the lead character in something, things are just happening to you all the time. Uh-huh. And you're just reacting to it. And you keep trying to make things happen and they don't go your way. But when you're the evil person, things generally go your way for a long time. Interesting. Until, until they, they don't they go don't. your way anymore. That's interesting. I've never really thought about it that way. So were you excited that we... Oh my gosh. I was so excited and I had so much trouble not telling everyone the spoiler. <laughs> That I was, I was like, oh yeah, I'm just playing a small role in it. But I wanted to be like, actually, I'm playing the also, killer. I'm the I end of the killer. I kill everybody. So intense. I have two friends, and I'll just kill everybody. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say to everyone. But I said I had to be like, oh yeah, no, small part. You know, just, they want me to be on set because there's a little small, like my dead bodies there the whole time. So. Yeah, well, I mean, that is true. And, uh, but no, oh, God, I love a good villain. Yeah, it's so fun, right? You know what I just watched for the first time? What? I just watched Die Hard. I knew you were going to say that. For the first time. Talk I'd never about seen a good before. villain. I'm just talking about Alan Rickman. 
Yeah, he's you amazing. Know? So you never saw Die Hard, but you were helping me with my Alan Rickman from Die Hard. That's right. <laughs> this is another another moment where I just wanted Sean. I guess maybe I just really want Sean to like me. Because <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in there for the audition. I'm like, no, no, no. For, I've been wearing this oh, suit. for Arthur. Yeah. I'm wearing this suit all day. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm there, and we're both part of a 30-minute musical uh, review of all these different songs oh, from yeah. these movie musicals. Oh, yeah, that's that's doing, like, fun stuff it's with It's kind of weird. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but we're just playing with it. I feel like this first one's a test one. We're doing a second one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can do, well, I was about to say as many as you want, but I only have four for each of right. us. So you can do up to four. But even then, I didn't want Sean to think I didn't know. I had never watched Die Hard. <laughs> and he's, like, asking me for help. So I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I, like, I knew Alan Rickman enough that I could just be like, do that sure, Alan sure. Rickman voice. I have a confession to make along those lines. but You've never seen Die Hard? No, I have. Oh. Sean does a great Alan Rickman, and he won't probably ever do it. Um, Alan, can you do it right now? <laughs> no. Tom, I'm you sure right you now? do, too. You have a great Jeff Negative Goldblum. Two. <laughs> Negative two. Uh, you I have told, a great Jeff Goldblum. I, well, I, I, well, before, I'm not going to do that. Before. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You're not going to do it? Maybe I'll do you it. You don't have to. Maybe I'll do it because I'm not taking that chance <laughs> with the points because sure, I'm sure. a guest testant. And I, 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 yeah. told, I told uh, William Joe Stribling, don't ever know what to call him. I yeah. know you guys tried to get into it in your episode. We did. And he um, but did I told him, an I asked him, hey, about to do craftversations, any tips? And then in all caps, he said, I dare you to break my points record. <laughs> So my we'll plan is is just to I'm just battling Sean and myself and you and William. So okay, Caesar everybody. Should be pretty simple. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, good luck. I was gonna say I have a confession to make, and that's that we really you may already know this. We have a few lines from Poe Party that we quote constantly in life, and one of them is "You figure it out." <laughs> <laughs> To do your voice. <laughs> uh, amazing. Edwin Allen Poe. <laughs> so good. Yeah, so you do a mean Jeff Goldblum. I do some Jeff Goldblum. Because in 30 Minute Musicals, you play him I play a couple him, times, right? Well, I, I followed somebody else. It was Michael Bernardi. He was their resident Jeff Goldblum. Oh. And then he went and he had to, he had to go to Broadway for Fiddler on the Roof, which is oh. crazy. It's crazy because his dad played Tevya. Back in the day. Oh, that's And now cool. he's Tevye's understudy and has gone on and he's wearing yeah. his dad's boots that's from the so show. That's so crazy. But when he was gone, they were like, I don't know, do you want Ryan to do it? And so I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. And I went in and I've done it now for Independence Day and Jurassic Park. My Jeff Goldblum from Independence Day, mm -hmm. I just basically found a weird walk for him. Because he walks really weird at the end of that movie when they're wa when him and Will Smith are walking back and they have the cigars in their mouths and they're in the desert and he just has like this <laughs> saunter that he's doing that's so like lanky and weird and it's so odd to think that Jeff Goldblum was a like sex symbol like Earth Girls are easy Independence Day like he seems like so like you know a little weird uh -huh, uh -huh. well it's great I think your Jeff Goldblum is really good he I appreciate that. he's into the ladies that's for he sure he is into the ladies he has yeah. a show he does uh, yeah at the I seen Ro it. Rockwell? Mm -hmm. That's where we did that review. Yeah. Yeah. And he does like a whole show where he plays piano. And yeah, it's invites great. Invites people on stage. Have you seen it? I haven't seen it. It's really fun. I want to see it. should go sometime. But I listened to his interview on um, Mark Maron's podcast. Mm -hmm. And he's just so... He already is just so weird and interesting. It's like he doesn't have to do much work to bring that to his roles. The first thing I saw you do was um, Hook. I love Hook. You were. That's one of my. Is that one of your great. favorite childhood movies? Oh yeah, absolutely. You were great in it. Thank you. Yeah. I watched that so many times as a kid. I watched Newsies. Oh yeah. So many times as a kid. I was just at a, <laughs> at a birthday party and someone started. It was actually a Disney birthday party, so it was all Disney music. Someone was like, "Well, Newsies is Disney, right?" And I was like, "Yes." <laughs> so like four of us that knew Newsies. Did really you? geeked out and sang Santa Fe. That's so fun. And sang um, Carrying the Banner. I'm sure. You know, Christian Bale refuses to talk about that movie. Does in he really? Yeah. That's so, so weird. above it. I'm like, that's one of your best performances, bro. That sucks. Oh, also. What? You play Tom Skerritt in Top Gun. I do. Oh, you and played, we, and uh, we met him. We met him. What? Did you know that? No. He was at the Seattle Web Fest. What? What was he doing there? <laughs> he made something. Oh, yeah. and you have an opinion on it, but don't share it too much. Let it's you watch great. This. That's cool. I haven't seen Top Gun. I haven't seen the 30-minute musical Top Gun, but I want to. Did you see the movie? I have a long time ago, yeah. See, I had never seen the movie when I first did 
30 minute musicals Top Gun and I just kind of like did like a bad representation of like a drill sergeant as the character and uh -huh. nobody questioned me or said I should change <laughs> anything so I never watched the movie until like the fifth time doing the show. And I'm like maybe I should like know what I'm doing now. I love that you just like <laughs> just haven't seen in. these things and you're just like yeah them. and I give people notes and I'm like well you see Alan Rickman in, in Die Hard is actually a bit more menacing. <laughs> I That's would know. Really funny. Big thing. It held up, by the way. The movie holds up. It's great. Die Hard? Oh, it's so But, fun. but, I'm sorry. What? It's just like that classic, and I love it, the classic 80s movie, tie everything up really nice at the end. Oh, sure, sure. But, like, the one officer's coming out, he's like, I have some questions for you. And then the Russian guy comes out, and then Hal, like, shoots him for the first time since he killed that kid. And it's really exciting. And then um, Argyle comes out in that beat up, questionable limo. Spoilers. I don't remember. And they jump into the limo uh, with him. And then he's just let off the crime scene. He's just like, bye. <laughs> bye. Go leave in that that guy. Who, like, that's definitely uh, evidence, that limo. And <laughs> that guy, he, he can't just go anywhere. He's not a police officer. And this woman, like, she was there for the entire... They've got to be questions. So you've got you. some notes. You can't just let them walk away. That's problem with Home Alone. Really? Yeah. Like, at the end? Yeah. The, the robbers are going to... Like, they're going to question them, and they're going to be like, well, this kid. Yeah. Right. It's like when musical artists get uh, uh, lazy at the end of a song, and they just fade out. It's like, oh, end your song. Sean also hates that. End your song. Sean hates that you know? so much. I can't believe it. If you're going to write a movie with great, like, great beginning, great just, middle. It doesn't fade out during the climax. Give it an end. Wow. But then I was thinking, the real, the lost sequel of Die Hard, where, like, the Argyle... There are sequels, aren't there? There are sequels, but the lost sequel of the one I have is right after this, of, like, them in the limo. And, like, this limo just crashed head first into an ambulance. Whoa. Like, how can it make it? So, like, on the highway or something, it breaks down... And so him and Argyle have to get out, him and his bloody feet, so he's not doing well. They have to push it to the 7-Eleven or the gas station that uh, the cop had gone to earlier to buy donuts. Wait, are you making up this potential? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it's been forever since I've seen Die Hard, so I can't really offer a critique. I like that. That's looking good, Ryan. <laughs> I know exactly who I'm going to give this to. Ooh. It's the winner of the last, se last season Ooh. of Craft Versations. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Stribling. This is for you, Joe Stribling. <laughs> this is for you. Ryan, I don't know if you know this, but we oh, like to... Thanks. We like to play a little game here on Craft Versations. <gasps> a game? A game. Would you like to play this game? I love games. So this game is called Hanky Panky, Mary, or Kindly Push Aside. Ah, right. And I don't know. I was thinking it might be fun to do villains with you. I haven't right. done villains before. Great. So who could I give you for villains? I'll give you Hans Gruber. Hans Gruber. Cruella de Vil. Oh. But Sean says it has to be the Glenn Close version. Clearly. Clearly. <laughs> But I'm also mixing her in my mind with the cartoon version. Just to sure, it. sure, sure. Which I feel like she had really like sharp features. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's pretty angular and scary. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, you know who she she just reminded me of? Who? The, the, the lady from um, Emperor's New Groove. Oh, Yzma! She's I never great. even thought of those two together. All right, so go on. Don't know comes. how I like how this turned out, but... It's okay. It's a little like, I feel like you go to a modern art museum and that would be <laughs> up there is. for... I feel like the Pinterest board of this craft looked cool. It was a lie. It, it like, was a lie. I'm it making... looked cooler than this. Wow, you wrote my name on it. That's really I'm going to see what you. happens. Wow, oh, thank you. You see what happens to my name. Yeah. I think I'm going to do one without the alcohol, just for funsies. Really? Yeah. I feel like you're breaking I'm... the rules if you do that. Um, Are you generally a rule breaker? No. Very much not a rule mm. breaker. But is that like classically crafts... from life? Not yeah. much of a rule breaker? No, yeah, I'm pretty type A. But crafts, you can follow your heart with crafts, you know? You what can, can't you follow your heart you with? You can craft your truth, as we like to say here. Anyway, okay. Uh, Cruella de Vil. <laughs> you won't let me <laughs> take this off course. You're like, Ryan, there was a game gotta play to be game. played. Okay, so I don't watch Game of Thrones, so I don't really think she's actually a villain, but I was thinking Cersei Lannister, because isn't she kind of mean? Isn't she kind of nasty? So what are my options to do with these these oh, three people? Hanky panky, Mary, or kindly push aside. Great. And if I kindly push them aside, that means like they're pushed aside for the rest of Forever. time. Yeah. Okay. So like they're <laughs> not going to breathe anymore or be you're alive. Not, you're not killing them. You're just then, giving they're, them they're a gentle gone. shove for all eternity. Okay, good, 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 good. So they just have no choice except for to they just go away. be a suck. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Think I'm on board. <laughs>
I think like I can't deal with anybody who's cruel to dogs. Yeah, that's that's just like she's a like no-go. the worst. The worst. The worst. She's so and like that's hard to say when you hear all the uh, like I do eat meat and I love meat and the bad things that happen and like all the processing plants. I'm sorry. Sure. But like dog. But she wants to kill puppies for no other reason than to, to wear them. them. Yeah, that's pretty. To awful. wear and, and so she's gone. I will yeah. kindly. She deserves push it. Push her aside. Yeah, she deserves it. And then I'm a I'm a have some hanky panky with Cersei. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like yeah. You weren't sure where that was going. I wasn't. You sure. weren't sold. I, I could go either way. So you're gonna marry Hans. I'm gonna marry Hans because he's kind of a genius. Yeah. He's very loyal. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't he? Sure. He's got a really good family because in the third one, his brother comes back to. Whoa, really? He's got so I'm, I'm marrying family. into a family that cares. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, so that's my guy. This video was made possible by my patron Paul Komorowski. Paul, sending you lots of love this month, and thank you for being one of my patrons.